purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. You know that feeling you get when you're sipping on a peppermint mocha and you're all warm inside? I hope that's how you feel every time you tune in to the Bible for Busy People. I'm Erica, and I'm so glad you're here. We're kicking off a brand new series called Do Not Be Afraid, The Angels of Christmas. From the time I was a little girl, I've always been fascinated by angels. I think so often we picture them as cherubs playing harps on clouds, but angels have purpose. Just like you and I do as human beings, they are warriors and they are messengers. So let's meet the first angel of Christmas. We're going to find him in Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments And regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. Can you imagine? Here's our takeaway verse, verse 13. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Can you hear the doubt creeping into his voice? Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace. Of having no children. I love that Elizabeth's response to a long awaited answered prayer was that God is kind. He is so very kind. He's kind in the waiting and in the delays. There's always a plan unfolding. With God, it's always a symphony, and there are so many instruments involved. Zechariah and Elizabeth would become the parents of John the Baptist the one who ate honey and locusts in the wilderness and prepared the way for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Look at how God answered Elizabeth's prayer. He gave her the honor of being the mother of a very special person. So often when you pray a prayer for such a long time, you think maybe God has forgotten you when actually God is getting ready to do something amazing. It's just in his time. See, Jesus was the movie John the Baptist, Elizabeth's son, was the preview. John was encouraging the people to get their hearts right with God, to repent of their sins, 
and to be ready because Jesus was about to kick off his ministry. He was about to do all of the miracles that you and I have heard about. The turning of the water into wine at Cana, the feeding of thousands of people with just the fish and bread from a kid's sack lunch, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, and ultimately his own resurrection from the dead. John was saying, get ready for the Lord is coming. And that's what you and I have in common with John the Baptist. Because Jesus Christ is coming again. Once he came as a baby and he grew up and felt every emotion you and I will ever experience as human beings. He lived a sinless life and he died on the cross to pay for my sins and your sins. And he rose again, defeating death, hell and the grave. And that's why Christmas and Easter are linked. There's so much hope. Jesus died to build a bridge back to God for us. All you and I have to do is walk across. All you and I have to do is say, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I believe that you died for me and rose again. That's it. And when you pray that prayer, God gives you peace here on this planet and eternal life in a place where there is never again a need for Kleenex. And that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. See, you and I can now prepare the way for the Lord's second coming. We can live lives of love and tell people about the hope that you and I have found in Jesus. And in doing that, prepare their hearts because he is coming again. God is kind. That was John the Baptist's mother's response when God finally answered her prayer. And you'll find that he's kind too if you walk across that bridge and reconcile with God. All right, until next time, you are loved. Thank you so much for listening to the Bible for Busy People. If you need prayer or you're ready to go a little deeper in your faith, we've posted some resources for you in our show notes. We'd love for you to share this podcast with a friend and leave us a review. It helps us reach even more people with the hope of Jesus. This podcast is part of Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and live in God's purpose for your life. Find more podcasts that will recharge you at onpurposely.com. Come